China are not reducing their empire. They're growing their empire, even physically, like by landmass. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're taking over uh, countries. They're finding ways of moving into countries. They obviously have um, probably the most powerful hold in Africa at the moment. We know they're trying to build their route to Africa. Um we know that they ha we've seen what's been going on at the factories where the, the pay is sort of $2 a day, where they have the nets outside the factories, which could be looked at as similar to slavery. And then in Russia, Russia are obviously not shrinking their empire. They're growing their empire as well. And I look at the West and think that we're just the complete opposite. Like I, I, I just don't see any future. Do you? Interesting question. No future along the current trajectory. I would say that if we carry on as we're going now, then what history shows is that a culture that acquiesces in its own decline like this will eventually, because of the weakness it is displaying, invite attack from mm. more aggressive, more assertive nations. This seems to be just a fact of nature. So the different nations exist in relation to each other in terms of what the philosopher Hobbes described as the state of nature and being red in tooth and claw. So this is just like how the weakest animal is the one get picked off by the predators. Mm. Same kind of thing. Weakness is going to invite attack. An awoke military is going to be a weak military and China, Russia, they can sense this. And it's not a coincidence that just as we are pushing the emasculation of young boys, men, and trying to change the face of the military, mm. China is embarking on basically a masculinization program. So they want effeminate pop stars taken off social media taken out of the highlight the spotlight in culture and boys are being taught traditional masculinity in schools as part of official lessons at the request right. of the government so they're going in the opposite direction from yeah. what we are is that because they've seen the effect that it's that a little taste of the west has had on their young men or is it just because they think that that's what you should do do you think i think it's partly about seeing the effect of it on the West and being concerned about where things might be heading if China follows. Right. And it's okay. also about a return to traditional values, I think. Some of the elements of traditional Chinese society seem to be being reaffirmed and the value of the family has been made a little bit clearer recently. Mm. Yeah. I guess the one-child policy didn't work as well as they'd... Well, maybe it did work as well as they hoped. Uh, a lot of people always say it didn't, but I think what they wanted to do was stunt growth for a while, and now they're you know 12 years away from becoming twice as rich as America has ever been. Mm. But obviously now they're having to grow their families up again. Yep, it's, it's definitely an area to watch. I think you're right to bring it up as an interesting one. So going back to the sort of the event, I just wondered how did other teachers um, and or parents support you or not support you? When there was a debate about decolonizing the curriculum and there was a big open letter about how Black Lives Matter was so important, it got about... 500 signatures roughly and that just puts in perspective that the open letter asking for me to be reinstated uh got nearly three thousand, i think it was wow so it, it was a much bigger thing than that woke hot topic now yeah. that suggests that the strength of feeling among the student body the parent body and quite a few teachers signed it too was pretty high so in yeah. other words this, this wasn't just some minor peripheral thing just to do with me you know he, he just happens to want to talk about these ideas no this goes right to the heart of the school which 
has got a room called debate in every single boarding house because it's such a big part of its culture. Mm. George Orwell went to Eton and he said that if liberty means <laughs> anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they don't want to hear. And now you've got one teacher saying, I don't want to hear that. And I don't want <laughs> students to hear it either. Yeah. So people know that the, the soul of the school was at stake. There is there's some sort of bitter irony that George Orwell attended Eton. And now Eton, you know, could be the beginning of the end. But anyway, let's stay positive. Um, so I just wanted, like, at a personal level, when you were at university, which, you know, don't want to give away your age, but, you know, it was sort of a decade and a half plus one year ago. Um, I just wondered how you found it there. Like, was it because I didn't go to university? I just wondered if it was if you were seeing any signs of this back then, if it was, you know, you, you could see it loosely, but not really. Or if it was kind of loosely scattered over everything or what? Yeah, I noticed the university. I think it's really intensified over the last three, four years, around 2018 onwards. I think it's really accelerated. But okay. when I was at university, I noticed it too. That is partly because I read English at university. And for reasons we can get into, English degrees and English departments have been the epicenter of woke. They have, so yeah. I noticed that a lot of the courses on offer were to do with queer theory, feminism, and exactly the kind of what are termed cultural Marxist framings of society and literature mm. that are central to the woke politically correct narrative. Now, mm. they weren't compulsory. You didn't have to do them. You could do things like Old Norse, <coughs> epic, heroic literature. You could do things like Shakespeare. But even then, with the content matter being very different from reading novels about gay life in Paris and London, for example, um, you still got some of those critical theories being presented. So yeah. it was quite hard as a student to avoid that particular worldview everywhere. Yeah. I just feel like it's crept up on everyone, like the whole thing. It was always there in the background, but I don't ever really remember anybody being like this until maybe four years ago when suddenly 80% of everybody was like this. And I just wondered if you if you have the same sort of thing. Like, did it come as a shock? Has it all come a bit rushed, even though you were in education, where obviously you'd have a bit of a head start? No, to be honest, partly from being in education, watching colleagues and listening to what the teacher training courses were like, mm. I knew where it was all heading. And if you go back before to the inception of this around the 1930s, some people would put it earlier, um, going back to, to Marx and Engels. But mm. around the 1930s with the Frankfurt School and then through the 1960s, as those ideas get transferred to America with mm. philosophers like Herbert Marcuse. Marcuse, yeah. You, you've got the, the intellectual roots of this being set down early on. And mm. it's something that's been a long time in the making. And it's allowed to progress like this because people think that appeasement and sensible debate, the way they normally deal with intellectual topics is the way forward. But mm. it doesn't work because you're dealing with a movement, you're dealing with activists who yeah. regard debate, regard rational discussion as just a tool of the oppressor. These people don't really even believe in truth. They think that if you are arguing with them, you're just oppressing them using logic and reason as tools <laughs> of the patriarchy. So yeah. the whole thing is rigged in their opinion, and that's why they don't respect it. So you're being fooled. You're playing their game if you think that conceding ground to them is going to make them go away they will just use it to take more and more ground winston stopped writing partly because he was suffering from cramp he did not know what had made him pour out this stream of rubbish 